All right, so this video is going to be an introduction to power series. We just finished the first half of sequences and series. So now we just got to finish it off here and we're going to start off with power series. Okay, so the first question, of course, is what are we talking about when we say power series? Well, a power series pretty much takes on the form, the sum from, let's say, n equals zero to infinity of c sub n times x to the n. Now, there are two different parts to this that I just wrote down, and let's go over what they mean. The c sub n here, okay, this is a coefficient, but you'll notice that there's an n here in the subscript, and that means that that coefficient is changing, okay? So, you know, it could be some term with n's or, or something like that. It could be a, you know, an n minus 1 over 2n or something like that, you know, but, but when you plug in whatever n that is, you get some kind of coefficient, okay? So, this is a, put that down as a coefficient for each n. Now, next we have this x to the n here, okay? And this is kind of what makes it a, this is what's making it a power series, okay? This, this addition of the variable, this uh, x variable. Okay, now this x is a fixed value. It's not something like n where it's changing in each term. Okay, this x is a fixed value raised to the nth power, which of course the nth power that's making it change, but you you know you get the point that that x at least is a fixed value. Now, if you are to write a series like this out, what you would end up getting is, of course, you would get for your first term c sub 0, and you would have x to the 0, which is just, of course, 1. Anything to the 0 power is 1. Okay, you next will have, of course, c sub 1, and then x to the first power, which is just x. And then you'll have c sub 2. Okay, so these, you know, the C's, all, all that stuff, it's just different coefficients, okay? It's different, like, like I said, n minus 1 over 2n, something like that. Just something with n's in it. When you plug in that n, you're going to get some coefficient. Okay, so don't get scared with all these different letters and all that stuff. C sub 3, x to the third power, okay? And so on and so on. Now, another thing that we can do with power series is actually center it at a. We now have the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of c sub n times x minus a to the nth power, okay? So now we're just centering it with that a, okay? We're centering it at a. It's the same thing as if we were centering a circle or something like that. You see something like this, okay? So this is stuff that we've really seen before, okay? So just don't get confused with all this notation. Now, if you were to write these terms out, what, what it will look like now is just c sub 0. Okay, we're still starting off with c sub 0. And we then get plus c sub 1 times x minus a plus c sub 2 times x minus a quantity squared and so on. So to put all that in simple terms, sometimes you may see something in here with the x Okay, it may be subtracted, added, whatever. Okay, but that could be something that happens. So, anyways, a big thing of what we are going to be doing with power series here is trying to figure out where this x, or what values of x will make this series converge and what values could make it diverge. Okay, so here is a quick example of something like that. So our example here, what values of x make this series the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of x minus 6 raised to the n over n converge, okay? So let's figure this out. And how we're going to do this is by using, we're going to start off by using ratio test, okay? So if we start off by using ratio test, remember that we're going to be taking the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of it's going to be a sub n plus 1, or a sub n's right here, right? And 
we're going to be dividing by a sub n, okay, which is this. If we do that, and then we have to see, uh, you know, where it's going to be. For what values of x will it be less than 1? For what values of x will it be greater than 1? And for what values of x will it be equal to 1? Okay, so that's what's about to happen here. Now, we can write this. The limit as n approaches infinity, we do the absolute value. Oh, that's a little too big, I think. We get, doing the n plus 1 stuff here, x minus 6 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. That's going to be over, now just, x minus 6 to the n. That's going to be over n. Okay? You don't do anything, the x isn't anything special here, okay? This, that's just going to sit there. All that's really, all that you're changing here with the a sub n plus 1 is just you're changing the n to an n plus 1. Okay, nothing else happens with the x. So now we can get this all into one fraction by taking the limit as n approaches infinity of, well, now we have the absolute value of x minus 6 to the n plus 1 over x minus 6 to the n. Actually, we'll do it into two separate fractions here because it'll be a little more organized that way. We'll put this n to the top here and get an n over n plus 1. Okay. Now, this n over n plus 1 here, that as n approaches infinity, that's just going to equal 1. So we don't need to worry about this piece at all right here. We What's left is just this x minus 6 to the n plus 1. And that's going to be over, of course, x minus 6 to the n. If you divide that out, you just get x minus 6. Okay, so now we're dealing with just the absolute value of x minus 6. That's what you get out of that limit. Okay, notice I dropped that limit notation because we don't care anymore. We're not dealing with n's. The n power here, that got canceled out when you divided this through, and you're just left with x minus 6 to the first power. So, really, you can just have the absolute value of x minus 6 here, and you're good. Now, where will this converge? Well, according to ratio test, this will converge when the absolute value of x minus 6 is less than 1. So now you need to ask yourself the question, well, what values of x would make the absolute value of x minus 6 less than 1? Okay, and to do that, let's drop these absolute value signs here and put this as greater than negative 1. Okay, we add 6 on both sides here. Well, on all sides, I guess, not yeah, not both sides anymore because we're dealing with three things. And you get that well, we'll have a 5 is less than x is less than 7. Okay? So you know that this series will be convergent if x is between 5 and 7. However, remember where the ratio test is inconclusive. The ratio test is inconclusive when this limit equals 1, okay? And where it equals 1 is at these endpoints here. If you plugged in 5 and you plugged in 7, okay? If you plugged in 5, you get a 5 minus 6. Remember, we're taking the absolute value of that, so the absolute value of negative 1, that would be 1. And the same thing would happen with 7, except you'd get a 1. Right out, you wouldn't need to use that absolute value sign, okay? So what we're going to need to do is use a different test to figure out whether those endpoints, okay, we gotta check those endpoints and see if they converge, because we need to know if we should include this five and include this seven. So let's take a look at that real quick. Let's say we have the, let's say we're plugging in five here. The sum from n equals one to infinity of five minus six to the n over n. Okay, so all we did was plug in that five. Now. If you do that out there, you get the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over n. Now, this is something we've dealt with before. This is the alternating harmonic series, and we know that converges by the alternating series test. Okay, so that converges. So, since that converges... What we know is that we're going to include this endpoint, this endpoint 5 here, okay? Now, we also need to plug in 7 and see what happens here, 
Okay, so we get a seven minus six to the n over n. Doing some quite rigorous subtraction here, we get the sum from n equals one to infinity of, well, we'll have a one to the n here, and that's just one, so we get one over n. We know that that's the harmonic series, and that diverges. Okay, it's a p series where p is one, and well, that would make it diverging. Okay, when p is less than or equal to one, the p series diverges. Okay, so that means that we're not going to include this this endpoint here, this seven. So these values of x here, okay, from five to seven, and including five, not including seven, will make this series converge, and that is going to do it for this video. So if this video helped you, make sure to leave a like and subscribe by clicking my icon in the top left. You can also view the playlist for sequences and series in the next video in the series. Lastly, if these videos are really helping you and you would like to consider supporting me, I have my Patreon linked in the description down below, along with some other pretty cool links that you should definitely check out. See you soon!